It's Monday. It's April 17th, 2023. Um, I'm re-watching. Like, the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York was like four hours. It was really, really long. And it is such... I mean, I don't really know anything Irish. My Irish grandmother passed away. And it just... So I, there's, I don't know, there's been a disconnect. I don't know why, um, for as long as I've been here. Um, so I'm watching Chaminade High School. Um, it says Fortes in Unata. Um, celebrate the spirit of St. Patrick. I'm watching them again from this point of view. I just, um, President Joe Biden went to Ireland and that day they had this, um, they say these words, something called an IRA, which here it's a retirement account, but I, that's on the financial institution side. I don't know what it means out in the real world beyond, in the great beyond. Um, so I'm watching this parade there. They were angry. They, they showed that there was an Irish Republic that was marching. And then there was, and I think there was the Catholics that were marching in them, the Protestants. Again, I have no words here that even, like, I don't even have my ancestors' history, I have no idea there's been so much disconnect. Um, I have no idea why there's hatred amongst those two communities. And then there's the overshadow of other influx of something over my life frame. Um, so I'm watching it. Um, and inside the parade, they... It's Chaminade High School, which is an all boys. Um, I think it's in the Catholic circuit. Again, my aunt Judith used to work there. Um, her son went there. Um, she was the lunch lady. So she was in the kitchen and she was serving food to the, the next generation or actually, I mean, she, she served until up to her death. Um, she had a forced retirement because she got very ill. And then, um, and then she died. Um, but she had a very long career in the kitchen serving food um, to all of the next gen boys that would go out into and the future of America. Um, but she herself had a very humble position in caring for and, and watching over the next, um, graduating classes of Chaminade, um, locally. And so that's part of, and now she's my house of August in the sense of her and I were both cosmologically born in August. Um, significant for me um and so i'm watching a class i that i guess these are currently there that never got to meet her never saw her contribution but i know that there are people who exist that know aunt judy from the lunchroom at chaminade and bob from the mechanics that ran the fleet of buses um, I know these are important factors. Um, so anyhow, so I'm watching as they're marching in this, in, in New York, it's just a sea of people. I don't know other than them having this banner of the one high school, uh, where they're in some part of their learning phase before they enter the American labor market 
um, or enter the world in whatever they're going to do. I don't know if they're staying local. I don't know what they've been offered. Um, so I'm watching this, just remembering Judy this morning. Um, and then it goes into other conversations um, about last night, 60 Minutes had on the open source AI process. Um, and then I was watching yesterday from 1996 when I was graduating high school. Um, I was watching this movie called The Rock, which in the Academy in New York City, it seems so crucially important um, at emergency service management. And there's just this I'm totally frightened of this open AI source that almost feels like a blind side to some other super bloom that was already somewhere in the system that I don't feel my parents were um, in some being taken care of in a way that then got me to where I needed to be. Um, which as a woman, if a woman in this particular situation is not cared for properly, that is like pushing a woman to extinction. And especially if like world or global numbers are dwindling into a point where it's a minority amongst the majority, it is significant. Um, so I'm keeping that in mind. I also watched um, what I would call next gen. He's somewhere um, in the population after uh, this. I mean, I have a stake in the future um, as far as cosmology goes. Um, and there is someone by the name of, he's a comedian, uh, Rami Yusuf. And he's got a comedian spot, Feelings, which I listen to uh, with an open heart and open ear just to gain perspective on conversations that um, the youth are having in a comedic way. Um, and perhaps things that I didn't know, like I learned there's things called Friday prayers. I had no idea. Um... And then I was just, I was just listening. Um, it did not bother me nearly as much as the 60 minute special on the open AI or on the AI from Google directly. Now that I can see who is in the Google spokesperson and the, um, CEO, which I had no idea who they were. Um, again, there's so many moving parts to humanity and what's going on here. Uh, and having been left so far out of the conversation and then watching this piece on Bard, B-A-R-D. I was like, that's a four letter word. Four letter words. Those are patterns. Patterns lead to, again, it's significant if whatever. Um, I also noticed the four letter R-O-C-K uh, led to a movie Lin and Lou were watching yesterday by the name of Red Notice. Not really sure what that means, but Lin and Lou were watching this movie. It had the wrestler, The Rock, who's some gigantically built by the gods, it looks like, in like a Moana, Maui sense of entertainment, just for NYPD purposes, since they're they seem to be the ones who labeled themselves as the entertainment police. Um, so there's that. Um, and then there's this. Um, they, he's in a movie with Ryan Reynolds. I have a private Reynolds 
whatever and whatever, 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 grown up Lloyd in a harbor. Um, and then there's this, um, oh, and also Yusuf mentioned something about Egypt and bacon. And I'm like, what is Egypt and bacon? What is that about? I mean, I learned from the youth. They're so insightful. And then looking back on my own life, I'm like, oh, no, that's interesting. Because also the Google CEO says that he didn't have, they had an order. He was somewhere else growing up across in the great beyond the seas of this place before he he came here. Um, and they had to order technology, a rotary phone and wait for it. I'm like, right. You yeah, know, and that's, he's a little older than I am. He's in his fifties. I'm in my forties. And I'm like, no, my grandfather had bacon and had a rotary phone when I arrived in New York in 1978 from an American flower. Um, so I'm like, this is interesting how and whose super bloom is trying to get their children to the whatever in, they missed a really crucial part of my life frame and everything else is just almost disintegrated except i have this really crucial symmetrical piece and stake in the future for which they can't just i mean it's 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 a blind side it feels like somewhere in the super bloom um and however you tell space and time out of nothing for which i see google's working and then I sit on it and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, that looks like military grade equipment and research projects and like black ops almost way in fueling something. And I'm like, I wonder what the driving factors and features are on their abilities and capabilities to keep perpetuating this since I know my intellectual property has been, I don't know, hijacked, stolen. I mean, these are the words that come to mind when I think conjecture. Um, especially for the fact of I haven't been paid. I haven't even been given an arm to hold in a respectable way and a man to love in an RH negative community that would have been safe for my person. So it, I have a lot of real world problems going on at the moment. Um, especially like the feelings of a human being taken into account, which at times I feel like nobody ever takes that into account. Um, so I'm just kind of putting all of these things together. And then I'm thinking about laws and theories and what laws they're allowed. I mean, like the laws of nature. I mean, because even on the Google thing, he says like, we don't know where human thought and whatever. Right. Yeah. You know who knows what that is? The G.O.D. Um... And then there's this whole divine crime bureau and thing that went on with my inability. Oh, and the other thing is I noticed that this Google CEO calls when the AI machine can't figure out something, they call it a hallucination. I'm like, interesting, because at Stony Brook, when they sent me the international student, nursing student, the Beijing one, uh, there was a very, like, Google head um, looking doctor who wanted to proclaim me psychosomatic of having a problem and give me this really debilitating mental disease diagnosis for which I'm not accepting. I mean, bullets work faster in that capability. Um, I don't really know why they're training in this false 
imprisonment, almost inside of like an internment camp is kind of what it feels like, like really quasi, I mean, it's questionable at best. Why? And again, I get it. It's money making schematics. I mean, at this point, I feel like somebody feels it's sport. Somebody feels it's intelligence. And then there's some law, real law breaking and rule breaking going on somewhere in between. Again, I saw the rock movie. I know that there's real serious men and women out there. And then there's these entertainment, whatever, that tries to bridge the gap between the super serious crimes and then these financial crimes and whatever it is that they're really trying to accomplish in whatever, whatever, whatever. So there it says the shaman, it says shamanad and it says high school and that's where she used to work. And another Long Island institution, shamanad high school. And you know, this parade stands for many things. Uh, you know, you meet people all over the world who know about the St. Patrick's Day parade. And Sister Kathy McManus, who is a global Dominican, wants to say hello to her mom and McManus from Drumkeel and County Detroit. We hear the parade is coming in loud and clear uh, to the Dominican sisters in Blauville. The parade is on all the televisions in the mother house. Thank you very much. And this goes to the prioress up there, Sister Michaela Conley. So the convent has us a while on the left. And I'm trying to listen for the language from my gra I mean, my grandmother's flower arrived and had American flowers. So or Irish American flowers, and then my mother's American flower gave birth to me. So I'm really trying to figure out as far as flowers and um, whatever amongst us, like these ever-changing super blooms and super bloom situations going on. I'm just trying to like put it all in perspective um, with my very real ongoing issue of, um, how to even identify at this point, this is the pattern that they had given, um, when I entered some portion of the schooling system, um, So it's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight Nicole Cataruza. So there was this um rock movie, the Samoan rock, the wrestler guy, part of the entertainment package here in the New York area that is whatever, um that the kids take part in their whatever. Um he made a movie with this Ryan Reynolds guy, something about a golden egg. And it's called Red Notice. Seems really crucial, in fact, um, when I take into account that they're up to this bard thing. Um, oh, and then, oh, on CBS this morning, see the BS this morning, uh, I'm going to just mention it. Something about uh, the Daily Report another piece of the entertainment, a man who identifies as a comedian. Um, and he went outside of something that's going on with Trump in the local area. Um, and he was interviewing public voices or polling the public. I, again, I don't know what the rules on that kind of stuff are. Cause again, my, the human interaction has been so, I mean, poor at best. Um, I'm just going to go mention that because it seemed, again, with all these little pieces of data, these data points with their, I mean, they're, they're data points in hyperspace. So they are used to construct a reality again, but I don't have this human interactive piece. I search for it. Um, I try to find an adult version and I'm careful with saying that 
a um a parental an adult parental parental adult relationship in my 40s because I no longer have a high school to go to every day I no longer have employment that I'm able to go to so I'm trying to find some form of like where did humanity go seriously I'm lucky I found this Celtic relatable piece of Zion I am so thankful and grateful for them I tried to listen as I do on the large media in New York to ground myself in pieces of this world that are moving and that I don't have any real connection to, um, just data points on some moving picture. Um, I'm, I tried to listen to the shepherd being father Carl and his herding flock that gather under the same roof and give at least this small piece of community feeling in that we don't really know one another when we walk in that building. We don't know the pain that's brought with them or the greatness that walks through those doors. Um, and I tried listening to the Thin Places um, podcast. And because these are people that I see face to face, um, and not and wanting to give them the dignity and respect because it's all that I have left and access to in the local area. Um, it was not easy to understand all of them. For the most part it was, but it there was this one piece, which I mentioned yesterday, I really had to break it down to symbols and then work out some calculatable logic because it's not something that just is easy to pick up on in the first, like I actually had to pause it, pause the thought process, rewind the thought process. And cause I was just listening to it like a normal human in, okay, so you're born this, you identify as this, but then you call yourself this. And I'm thinking the human calculation on what that means in like general's public is one thing, but the way this one other person was moving throughout this, whatever was totally different than where the mind. So it really was this mind warping, uh, way of having to think and look and listen. So it really did take me like once or twice to go back and re-listen to it in order to better understand the person when I see the person there. Um, I didn't fully, and I hadn't put that much, I just accepted the person for who they are when they said whoever they were at the initial greeting. Um, so I'm going to go back into the other room and grab that piece uh, that they were mentioning about this Trump and this daily report. So this is E76 CBS this morning's uh, for reference um, for the local area. Again, it just grounds space and time because this is the date that it aired, whether they pre-recorded it. However, that works. I have no idea, um, but it's what, it's a piece of data that they're putting out in the field. Um, and the other piece of conjecture or data was the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which was in March. Um, this is now the month of April, so time has elapsed, but I still have these two data points that are in space and time um, that both have significance as far as things that um, are in my queue um, and have relevance.
Chris? Lise, thank you. We're just seconds away from more live local news, weather, and traffic streaming exclusively on CBS News New York. Find us on Pluto TV or by using the free CBS News app. And thanks so much for watching. I don't use either. Um, for some reason, there's this box, and it's called a Verizon. Verizon, it's got a, a, a check mark for this Verizon. Looks very much like a Nike like mark of sorts. One's like, though, like, I mean, again, I don't know anything about these symbols and how they, whatever. Um, there's also a large M in the corner. Seems like a significant symbol. Um, but I don't know this Pluto. I wouldn't even know how to find it. If that's like, is that a planetary <laughs> reference? I mean, um, Mickey Mouse and Sticker Club. I don't know if that's a reference. So um, anyhow, there's this. Um, there is this. They air it still as if it had antennas on CBS in New York as if like I don't know the difference if the studio changed like from in the analog world to the digital world to now the streaming world uh are these phases in some open AI source thing I mean I again I nobody tells me anything these are inferences that I'm noticing and just gathering data points because like, I don't really, I can't even find work, but yet you have a man who had to wait and order in another country, a rotary phone who now is running a trillion dollar company inside the same territory that I can't even find my own kind. I mean, I can't even find a safe male partner to enjoy life with or to enjoy company with. How did that happen? I'm Chris Raggy. I'm Mary Calvi. CBS Mornings is next. Have a great day. Um, so there's a man that looks like this. He's the CEO of Google. Um, there was one of his representatives from wherever they're from, uh, at Stony Brook. Um, when I was going through the Havana syndrome, only way I've ever heard them explain it. Um, but it was some kind of severe interference with my ability to process thought. Um, the hospital staff, retained me against my will. Um, they did not offer services like a brain scan or looking for a blood clot or any of that. Instead, they sent me an endo endocrinologist, a guy that maybe is in my phenotype. I'm not quite sure. Again, I don't know friendlies from problems in the medical community. Um, but the one that looked like this after the involuntary hold with the uh, nursing student from Beijing, uh, the guy that looked like that came over trying to give me some diagnosis, big pharmaceutical words for I'm, you don't have rights at all to try to diagnose me into some category that makes you superior mentally or physically or anything, especially after the life I've had on this planet in the same time where I have lost my own people and flock and there's some real insidious things going on. Um, so... I mean, from foreign and domestic and terrorists and 9-11 happened. And I really feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place at this point. Um, so that happened on American soil, in on the island inside the state of New York during my life frame, um, which is an ongoing effort of... Um, so the 
mention of the 60 Minutes was also on the E76 CBS this morning, as well as uh, they aired it on their own thing on this same television box system with the remote as a remote viewer. I don't use a keyboard. I don't use the cereal box. I was afraid of as a kid with the smaller squares. I said like, um, mini wheats. If the box cereal box on a mini wheat, it looked like it, but it was thinner and it was black. That's what, but I drew it on some kind of pink paper, I think, either pink or orange. And then there were little squares. I said, show me what keys look like to you, Judy. And she pulled out her automobile keys, her Corvette, her old, or she had a, not a Corvette. She had the Chevy something or other. I don't know. It was all American muscle cars. So whatever it was, and it was used, Bob was the mechanic again, Shamanad, whatever, you got your own community of verifying things. Um, but it was regular keys, like car keys. And I'm like, no, it's not, they, they say the word key, but they they look like the pieces of the cereal on a larger shape. I mean, that's how young I was when I had this vision of the future that I was really frightened of and talking to whenever I went to dreams working in whoever was catching me when I was falling asleep, like in my body was where Judy was. I would fall asleep and someone would catch me in the spiritual dream realm. And then I'd have these visions and then I'd wake up and I tell Judy immediately because that's what the person who was trying to protect me in spiritual and dream well and dream works was trying to get me to say to the humans when I got back to my body and however that works. And now I'm 44 and there's been some real serious stuff happen where like being able to have children and be able to find a spouse was completely misrouted for whatever I was afraid of. And it's ongoing interactive feature with humans on this planet. Now, um, this is an interesting, like, this seems like a sidewinder conversation, like, with a president and putting him through a grand jury. I don't even really know what that means. Again, they've kept me in a series of rooms. And then there's been like small allowances, but none of it around law and the legal system, um, especially when like larger laws of nature are being broken um, and misrouting and rerouting all sorts of things, um, which I don't know who handles that level of human ability. Um, but it does take some form of whatever. Um, so I'm watching this and the data point of them saying like, I, again, the angry mob when they don't see it or they don't see the harm in something and they're just like, yeah, put a president on trial, put him like that whole, I don't get that either. Cause I'm like, no, there's like, hold on a minute. And then they did it. And I'm like, you put the wrong one. But again, I don't know the backstory. So is it the wrong one? Is it not the wrong one? I don't have enough data points in order to make a logical, draw a logical conclusion with that one. But I'm watching. And there can pieces of conjecture. And now I see a very real person who's like, I th like, Maybe we made the wrong decision. Like, that's what I heard this morning about Trump. And I'm like, again, there's like a GOD calculation somewhere in the area Dyke community that has always existed for these strategies where now you got a whole section of Google who 
looks like a super bloom of different whatevers. I don't feel I'm represented Celtically at that level, but there's very real others that are there making these decisions and like ability to like do super quantifiable things like they were mentioning. They had a chess game and by like the afternoon it was able to beat the human and by like evening time only playing against itself it was world champion and i'm like oh, again oh. we're very excited about our next guest it's comedian jordan klepper the latest guest host of the daily show that'll be starting tonight you know klepper from two decades of comedy including as a contributor on the daily show both with john stewart and then with trevor noah his field pieces have been viewed more than 100 million wow. times, and that's what you get wow. with interviews with vaccine skeptics and insurrectionists, <laughs> alike, a big range of people. And recently, Klepper spoke with supporters of former President Donald Trump, who were outside the New York courthouse where Donald Trump was arraigned. Take a look and a listen. While I had fun getting into the scrum, I was surprised to find there were people who wanted to have meaningful conversations about the justice system. I don't believe we're, what, we're seeing, what you're seeing is justice. You don't believe in the grand jury process? I don't believe if, if, if this was a, a civilian, it would... I mean, he is a civilian. He's a person, a New York address. So he shouldn't go through the grand jury process. I believe it should be uh, dismissed. Because... Because um, I, uh, I'm going by a general gut feeling. Yeah, you can see the look on his face yes. as he realized, I don't really have a reason. <laughs> yes. uh, I just like that feeling. I, I no longer want to answer this question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have a legal system in place, but Bill's gut seems as good as ever. <laughs> feeling, he's got a feeling here or maybe somewhere else on the body is where that feeling is coming from. Uh, okay, The Daily Show, uh, or uh, Jordan Klepper joins us now. I didn't give you the proper introduction, so I wanted to. Thank you. I looked into the camera. <laughs> Jordan Klepper of The Daily Show. As a host now this week, I can give you notes. Uh, <laughs> always find your camera. You've got to find where your camera is. The words are there. This is an easy job. It's not I that know, hard. I know. And if the prompter goes out, I mean, it becomes a state of nature really quickly. You flip the table. We're making fire. Uh, I'm sorry we have you in this chair, and now that you're an anchor, and not at the anchor desk. Yeah. yeah, frankly, people seeing my legs makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what did you learn, uh, if anything, uh, about the opinions uh, on the Trump arraignment that you found outside the courthouse? What and did you, you see us? crying people? <laughs> Trump, right. Donald Trump said he saw police officers and people that were crying and apologizing. Did you see any of that? I, I saw very few weeping people outside the Trump indictment. I saw a ton of media. What I learned, I don't, I don't go to Trump events looking to learn. Uh, rarely there's a lot of education being given out. The indictment, what you did see, is a media circus uh, amplified by a few MAGA faithful who were not going to be at all thwarted by any information about this upcoming trial. And then folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and George Santos coming in to try to get some of that shine. George Santos was there. You asked him uh, about where he went to law school, Stanford, Harvard. That was really great. And then the volleyball. Right. See, like, this is also, um, some people believe laws are created in this all-knowing, all-seeing, all-feeling equipment that they refer to as the G.O.D. Um, but then there's got to be laws of nature that are enforceable from there, otherwise entropy and whatever break out. So it's interesting. They have these law schools, which they've been using, I suppose, in this area, in this open AI. I don't, I mean, like, is, is it within the same time frame that all of these pockets of, and like where this political system became again, like I don't really in poly science, I'm, I don't have like deep, meaningful conversations with humans. Like doesn't exist. I've been going to zoom. That's about as deep and meaningful as it has gotten in a long time. I try to have, interestingly enough, my stake in the future, uh, my symmetrical stake in the future I tried to have a conversation with him just recently, um, and I tried to show him the astrophysicists, the real ones, the real ones from NASA, who were explaining in their program that they start with a blank canvas, 
and then a couple of data points, and then they start measuring those data points, and then they can assign color and whatever, so that way it starts to make a pictorial image. I tried to explain to him how in that same blank canvas, time and space is no longer just an abstract theory. It's between him and I, it's an invention. It's a way of telling my arrival and his arrival in a very precise timing mechanic that is irrefutable. It exists on a blank canvas of two star points that are identical other than the year, the chronological year. It creates a system all into itself that's incredibly crucial and important. Um, I try to have that conversation with him. And my father, Lewis, in the chair was trying to discount my importance in this conversation with my son and me trying to explain it and connect with my son so he knows his importance as it relates to my person. And my father's just yapping in the background like a robot I couldn't shut off trying to discount my importance with my own son. That's been an ongoing problem that I don't know how to correct. But this is saying it's practicing law and it's just outside of the gates of Zion at the moment uh, is where his office is at Little Neck. Legacy. Do you yeah. have any answers on that? You know, he's still quiet about it. I think America, this is why you send a comedian into the field, is there's questions Americans have about our volleyball history. They replaced the Swazi sticker on the awning with a Santos sticker. Again, just facts in the local area. As a nation, it's not in... Oh, and I think that's in the Kim Chi Plaza, if I have the property managers correct. Books, and so if Santos will answer these questions, how else are we supposed to hear? So Santos has not announced uh, that he's running for president, but other people have. They're going to challenge Donald Trump. Uh, how do you feel about the Republican field? I don't see anybody who's actually offering a different point of view outside of Donald Trump. Uh, DeSantis seems to want to run alongside him. And I think when I talk to folks in the MAGA universe, there's interest in DeSantis, but nobody's letting go uh, their big red hat yet. And I think until somebody grows enough of a backbone to say, I'm not him, I'm me, he seems to be the choice. Well, listen, Donald Trump's core base is still extremely strong, despite the fact that he's been indicted and other cases are waiting in the wings. And now we're all looking at the Dominion case this week. Do you think that there's anything that will come out of that case that could change their minds? How do you think they're looking at that particular trial? Now, I mean, frankly, I think where they're going to go for their news, they're not going to hear about this case. Mm. Uh, Fox isn't going to talk about it. I don't think Newsmax or OAN is going to make that center stage. Uh, and yet, they've sort of been conditioned to take any information that's not pleasing to their worldview as something dismiss to it. dismiss it completely. So your guest hosting this week, uh, you are well known for those field pieces. I wonder what kind of field pieces we can expect this week and kind of guess, because what's been interesting is each guest host has had an interesting perspective on the kind of guests that they want to talk to on the show. And want to put their own... Again, I get lost in the minutia of the irrelevance, but um, but I just find that really important because I know somewhere outside of I mean, like I've never had the conversation um, on this side of the whatever about um, what a grand jury is, what, how the process is built or works. Um, I also heard something really frightening out of this, um, person, Yusef, who said something about someone's dismantling courts elsewhere. I'm, I get that that's like a big, I don't know if you call that a red flag still at somewhere between a rock and a hard place. And then some rocks got some red notice, but a golden egg and Ryan Reynolds in a movie that Hollywood's 
got lawyers and protecting whatever and the whatever, whatever, whatever of how the real world works. Nobody really knows. Um, having to try to like dissect this and realize like all I wanted was like, where do I belong out there? Because, like, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And I don't even, like, I got I got a pew I can go sit in once a week. But that's not enough to fill my life up. And that's not really living. And I don't even have this, for the time that I've spent here, there's been no, like, when they were riding these waves of financial freedom and security and everybody was getting stocks and bonds and shares and like vacations and travel and jobs and careers and places to go during the day didn't happen for me. So I don't know where that disconnect was either, but I'm not sitting on some windfall. I'm not sitting as a CEO right now on some board of directors that gets a salary. I mean, like that's other thing is that these people at Google as a CEO position, I don't really care how many years they spent in degreed degrees of certainty in order to get these positions. They're still paid while I'm contributing because Google is housing my cloud, running some form of analyticals. I'm not getting paid for it, but yet they're drawing salary to try to justify and become a spokesperson for some cog in the wheel that I don't even get to vote on their board of who gets the CEO position. Again, there's a lot of things that are out of whack and out of control and like out of whatever. But it makes just simple tasks of trying to live very difficult. It's star one, nine, seven, eight, star eight, three, seven, eight, Nicole Ketarosa. It's earth solar system, Milky Way universe galaxy is broken. And it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, Woman 361.